Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and so on and so forth. Today I'm doing a little review of some army toys, some cheap looking, generic looking, multiple uh, soldiers, various different types for at least four different armies, given the way that this is divided into quarters. Uh, picked this up just a little before Remembrance Day, didn't realise Remembrance Day was coming up, uh, don't ask me how I forgot about that, I think it was just an impulse buy. Decided it was a bit tacky to do a review on something like this back then, and just decided to do it now. Um, so let's just take a look at what we have here. First up, it's a tub. There are four different armies, British, Germans, with the currently German flag, Japan. And you can't see the flag here, but you can bet your ass, yes, it's America. You know, the people who seem to win all the wars, apparently. Or at least like to think that they win all the wars. Sorry if you're American, but you do come across like that. You don't win all the wars. You can't win everything, I'm afraid. Okay, so we have over 100 pieces of army toys. And from the looks of it, it's just soldiers with flags with a little bit of ground to plant the flag in, and that's about it. It's like there's some sort of breathing hole for starters, um, but there's also some sort of pla uh, cardboard separation. There might be something more to that, you never know. Uh, let's just see, recycled materials, that green arrow type thing, nothing to do with the TV show or the comic book character. Note of three, sadly deformed child, uh, yes. Ooh, package has to be kept since it contains important information. Really? Would that happen to be warning choking hazard? Nuts of a children under three? Uh, all rights reserved and blah 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 blah. Alright, let's open this bad boy up. Stick tape there. World's worst ceiling job. And there we are. The uh, biting gun tears right there, so let's just see. Let's see what we get. Oh my god, you're probably not going to have seen this initially, but uh, a paper. That's a new one on me. None of the old kits I've ever had in the past have ever had a bagpiper. Actually, there's two of them. There's another one. Two pipers. Over here we've got a grenade thrower. The drunken pipers. We have some sort of sniper. You can tell that because of the triangular support strut, so that it can shoot people that way. We have a soldier who's got a top-loading gun. I don't know if that actually exists at any point in history, but there you go. And of course we have a flag and its base. Oh my god, that does not want to stay in. Um, previous versions... Previous versions I've had of these, you've had to jam the flagpole in and it stayed in very stiff and erect and that's a terrible... Oh no, wait, it's just sh shadowy designs. You can see here and around here. They've decided to darken it and sh put shadows in to help give the illusion that it, uh, that it uh, is actually flapping in the wind. But it doesn't want to stay upright. If it turns ever so slightly, it threatens to fall. I'm going to try it in this one, just on the grounds that that might not have been the right hole. And my god, that is cheap plastic. Um, that feels slightly tighter. Now, three of these, these things came out, and it's conceivable that's the wrong hole uh, for the wrong thing, but that works slightly best out of the lot. Let's see what else we've got here. We've got a charging man with a bayonet. He's obviously going over the top and he's probably going to die soon. We've got another man with a more conventional rifle in the sniping position. Uh, another man who's charging. Got to say the... It's solid enough when it comes to the bodies, but when it comes to the bases, especially with this one as he's on one leg, I don't think he's going to stay, stay upright, do you? Let's see. Bit precarious, but it'll do. We've got a commander, or an observer, or something like that, or... He's just got a moustache. Not sure if the viewfinder's going to... Yes, there we go. He's got a moustache, as you can see. He's got binoculars. No visible weapons of any sort, although he does have a mighty fist that can punch somebody with. And then various other variations on the running. And the observer again, and... Here we have a man who's 
doing a Spider-Man impression. Invisible Spider-Man impression. Do, 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 do. Now he's supposed to be crawling along the ground, crawling for victory. We've got another grenade launcher here. We've got another man with a gun here. Oh well, let's face it, all men with guns here. We've got a kneeling man with a gun. Um, someone who appears to have been shot. That's my God, that is a new one. Let's see if we can get the focus to work. There we go. Yep, he's dropping his gun. He's holding his chest in pain. So he's either had a heart attack, or he's been shot, most likely. Possibly both. <laughs> yeah, uh, hmm. Quality control? <laughs> oh my god. Um, yes, yeah, a bendy gun. They did actually have genuine bending guns back in World War One. Um, some did have curves that would allow them to shoot around corners or over the top of the trenches. Um, I think we can put this down to design flaw though. So far I am not impressed with my countrymen. Let's just see what we've got. Oh, this is a more conventional rifle man. Possibly a shotgun, couldn't really tell you. No, no, it's definitely a carbine rifle of some sort. Um, yeah, more conventional pose. Now, of course, the biggest drawback with any of these is that, at the end of the day, they are just basically the same soldiers no matter what. Here's one of the other armies. I think this is the Americans, yes. It's the American GI with a machine gun. We've got three of those at least out already. And at least one rifleman. Not seeing any Brits with the machine gun, though. And that's a bit of a difference, because although we've got several papers, obviously psychological warfare there, uh, we don't seem to have any of the actual machine gunners. Although they do, do seem to be quite a variety of poses. And possibly drunken soldiers. Maybe they're designed to... Another curved gun. Maybe they're designed to fall over, because after all we've got two more men here who are dying, on their feet, literally. Who are still managing to uh, stay up on their feet. Unless you breathe on them. Oh dear. Well. Everything else I can see here. That's off to one side. Is exactly the same. Uh, as we've already got it up here. Except that there aren't any machine gunners. That seems to be. At least so far uniquely American. Let's just see. Um. Yes, that seems to be their flag in their mound. Same terrible quality of plastic. So let's just see. I was a little right before about uh, the dividers. There is actually a picture there of a ruined city. Absolute wasteland. Um, old dog and green and dull and so on. Um, well, there's really only one way I can review the rest of the soldiers, and to take the Field Marshal Haig approach from uh, Blackadder Goes Forth. Sorry, chaps. <clears throat> A single piper survives. In grey, of course, we have the Germans. And again, it must be this particular mound is just... has the wrong hole. Or a hole that's too big, or a hole that's potentially been used a little too much, but we have quite specifically a German officer. There weren't anything like this, there was no revolver drawn British soldiers there. Um, then we have this fellow here who's a sniper of some sort. Let's just see if I can get one of the Brits. That was the other one. Ah, here we are. No. Uh, hmm. Where were you? Don't tell me I mentioned it. No, there we are. No, wait. So I have this fellow here. Right, I must have imagined this. Although I'll have to go back over the video at some point. Uh, but the German soldier. No, oh, I love the moulding on that. 
What has happened to his arm? His arm has... He must have suffered some sort of nerve gas or agent orange or napalm attack or something because his arm seemed to have melted together with his uniform. Uh, but it is obviously a completely different design. So they've obviously... Although the plastic quality isn't fantastic. It's decent enough where it mainly counts. Um, hmm. I'll just grab a handful of each, I think. That'll probably be best. So we've got snipers, more men pointing revolvers, different kind of machine gun stance, different kind of machine gun. Uh, still bending like some others are, and as that one is. Um, hmm. But, yes, at least there's some variety. Because the ones I remember having when I was a child were almost always just simply the same soldiers every single time. But each side just painted different colours. And that fella doesn't want to stay upright at all. I'm sure we had some crawlers in the British Army. That's not a cheap joke there. Yes, there we go. Everything C. Completely different mould, completely different sculpt. Uh, yeah. Quite distinctly World War II-y. In that you've got the grease gun, as I believe it was called. One of the earliest submachine guns going. Also quite popular with their 1920 gangsters. Uh, and very much the kind of design you would expect to see with their... Uh, well, in just about any World War II movie. Obviously, these are Nazis. And yet, they had the one-day German flag. Probably... Probably did not insult people too much. But then again, I'm not really that familiar with what current-day German uniforms look like, so... Who knows? There we go, we'll just put them to one side. And we'll grab a handful of Americans who by the looks of it have somehow been infiltrated by at least one Japanese because he was amongst them but he probably climbed through a gap somewhere as you can see, same sort of idea okay, a crawler, although he could be dead that said he is actually looking upright he is looking where he's going, he's trying to see what he can see he might be wounded seems a bit smaller overall uh, than some of the other characters but we have mountain runners, a more traditional rifleman, a bazooka, two bazookas, a more classic grenade launcher thrower. If I sound excited, it's because these look more akin to the classic moulds that I can remember as a child. Uh, certainly remember some of these poses. Oh yes, these are all the classics. Yeah, every single one of these I recognise to some degree. We have the open-chested runner, we have the dramatic posing machine uh, gun holder, we have the grenade throwers, who have no we we uh, weapons of any of the sort, they're just absolutely stacked with grenades, we have the bazooka launchers, a whole load of riflemen, and the Observer. Now I remember having a German version of this fellow and unfortunately for him he looked like he had not been moulded correctly uh, in that he had only one arm and no legs no legs below the knee so either he had been involved in a tragic moulding accident or he had actually seen action and had been horribly blown up whether he was still alive or not is anyone's guess but there you are, there's the Yanks, and they seem to be the more traditional figures. I wonder if I grab a handful of these. What else am I going to find here? Um, a man with a dodgy gun. Don't try firing that, otherwise you're probably dead. I'm actually having a conversation on a two-way radio uh, with a small machine gun. This guy who seems to be trying to avoid something. Couldn't avoid me. Uh -huh. And again. Yeah, more or less the same Ooh. design every time, except this guy seems to have gotten rather dirty at the back. Well, there you are. Let's just see if the focus will... Yeah, realistic dirt. You can tell he's uh, had some filthy times. 
So that's the more traditional ones I can remember. And a handful of the Japanese. And already as I look at them, I can tell that some of them may potentially cause some issues. Let's just see. Yeah, the flag, again, is in a hole that is far too loose. Don't know what's going on there, but... Uh, these are definitely a fairly unique sculpt. The Americans are reuses of existing sculpts. Everybody else seems to be new and fairly unique. Um, so I will congratulate them for that. But here we have a Japanese soldier surrendering. And here we have a Japanese soldier who looks horribly deformed. Um, but otherwise... Hmm... Again, same sort of sculpting issues, and some of them don't keep the weight balanced quite right. Um, hmm. Various riflemen, they're going to shoot each other if they're not careful. I can't really say anything else about them because, other than the fact that they appear to be wearing Japanese era uniforms, uh, Japanese World War II era uniforms, that's about it. This fellow who doesn't want to focus, or the camera doesn't want to focus on him for whatever reason, let's just see, come on, focus, there we are. Hmm. Interesting. I think my favourite has to be the uh, one who's surrendering. Not that many of them, to be honest. Um, let's take a look at what else we've got here. As far as this internal box art is concerned. It doesn't want to come out easily. Uh, let's just see. It's bleak. It's desolate. It's lifeless. Nobody would ever want to lived there, nobody would have wanted to have survived there, nobody would have wanted to have grown up there. It could be Birmingham. Nothing else on the inside, it's just literally a cardboard cutout. Um, yeah. Well, it's a bit of a blast in the past, but otherwise, there's really not much else to say about it. Um... Good, solid construction, especially on the Americans for some reason. They seem to have had the most time and attention taken to them, although I do remember the ones I had as a child being somewhat firmer. Whereas these have quite a bit of bend to them in some places. And I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been involved in any kind of military endeavour over the past hundred or so years, and even before then, uh, who were fighting to uphold the rights and freedom that we enjoy today. That is a very important contribution. It mustn't be forgotten. It must be remembered. And thank you very much.